Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. Oh, and what? This is why we live up here. It's so great. I know it's summer. I was hearing that uh, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, friends that have nurseries up there, they're dealing with over a 100 degrees that far north. I just can't believe it. What were we? This this week it was... uh, 86, <laughs> 90 maybe. Oh, it's so beautiful. This, it, As we do warm up, you'll need to really watch your, your watering. So you need to be correct. You're spot on. So I actually had a break in my irrigation line that, that waters the front. I've got, uh, what is that, like eight buckets planted in the ground in my raised shrub bed. I wanted to feature some color, some some flowers. I love flowers. I just spot color, but it gave me a spot that was super easy to plant. Um, I filled it with potting soil, so I don't even plant it in the ground. It's in these pots that it looks like it's in the ground, but it's not. So then I've got then I've got irrigation going to that drip drip irrigation. Well, flowers take more water than shrubs or trees or vines, so I need to water those more often. Well, a break. I guess the winter, something had happened where the joint was weakened at a T at a, at a T intersection of the main line, that half-inch distribution line. From there, that half-inch distribution line, you tap in your spaghetti tubing or the quarter-inch line. This was the bigger, the bigger uh, piece of pipe. Gets the water out where it needs to be, and then you tap into it with the spaghetti tubing to get to the actual plants. Well, some water was coming out, but I'm going, what's at the end of the line? It was hardly showing up. I couldn't adjust it. And underneath the rocks, I found that one of the joints had failed. And so super easy fix. Cost $1.99. I made it five bucks, whatever. Took took 30 minutes. But I had to cut that one out, put a new piece in, put, put a few more pieces of pipe, and away we go. Well, if it was 100 and I didn't catch that, didn't see it, didn't monitor that, or didn't walk the line and make sure that it was running, I would have had dead plants. And and you know when that always happens. When you're going on that road trip to Southern California to visit the kids, that's when it fails. Uh, when you're flying, when you've got a business trip to New York City, that's when it fails. When you got when you got family over, you just you're busy on the back patio, just enjoying a backyard barbecue. And you you forget to look. That's when it fails. And so you kind of want to walk that line and just check it. Make sure they're all working. Especially your trees and shrubs. The, especially your evergreen trees. Evergreen trees have got this brand new growth that came out. And so it's tender. And so if they get dry, you know, a spruce, a pine, not so much juniper unless you really know, unless you get a professional eye, but they could get this this weepy look to it. The top will kind of fall over and goes, I'm so dry. I'm so hot. Oh, help me. Well, that's that means you need to probably uh, extend or add to that drip line. So when you first planted it, you probably had your main distribution line. You tapped into it with one spaghetti tubing, went out that extra five, 10 feet, however long it was to get to that tree. And then you teed off and put a couple emitters on either side of that tee. You can have up to 10 emitters on one spaghetti line or one quarter inch line. Um, The book also says you can go up to about 25 feet uh, before you run out of pressure, before you run out of of water. The water pressure, hydraulics are just kind of a funny thing. You're dealing with physics. Once you go too far and the, the line is too restricted, you just limit your amount of water. And so you go up to 25 feet and have up to 10 emitters. Now, I can tell you, in the mountains of Arizona, I have extended to 25 feet, and it had no water coming out. As you're going uphill, or if you got to go over a dry wash, or any kind of elevation change, it messes with some of that. So test it. But point being, you could probably easily, easily, easily cut the end off of that where that tree is, 
that's grown up now, it's triple in size. It probably needs triple the amount of water, and it probably needs it further out on the drip line where that tree is, is, has most of its newer root growth. Those are the roots that pull in the moisture and the food and the, and the water and things. So, so tea that, cut that off, put a tea in there, and just extend it out and add, instead of two emitters, maybe put four. Just kind of, it'll easily handle that. Your water pressure will easily, and this is something you can do yourself. You don't need a gardener. Uh, the half inch line can be a little difficult, that main distribution line, to get in. So you got to be like, almost like Superman to push these two pieces of pipe together. There's no glue. There's no, it's just pressure points. And so to get the pressure in, it does take a little oomph. But the quarter inch spaghetti line, super easy. Anyone can do it. For me, I personally like two gallon per hour emitter heads, and here's the reason why. Uh, the standard in the industry, if you have a landscaper come out and do this work for you, or an irrigation guy come out and tune up your system, they're probably going to use a one gallon per hour emitter head. The reason I like two gallon per hour emitter heads is they don't clog up as easy. So grit and just stuff gets into your lines. And I don't know where it comes from. You've got a filter, probably, in the ground where that uh, main manifold is what they call it, where they, they, where they build the different valves underneath the ground. They usually put a lid on top of it so you can walk over it. Underneath that, they'll actually have a Y filter typically, or they should have. Otherwise, they took too many shortcuts. They should, they should have spent the seven extra dollars and put a filter on it. So that filter, when you clean that out, that, that thing just looks, it looks dirty sometimes. So every spring I go through and clean those out. And then I'll flush the end of the line. So wherever the end is, the very length, very end of that valve, that water line, I'll open it up and just flush all the extra stuff out. And then I like to use a two gallon per hour head. I like to use a button or pressure compensated emitter head. That way, if you're uphill or downhill, it, it actually regulates the water pressure more evenly, no matter what elevation you are in, in, in the yard. And so Prescott, you folks have lots of elevation change. Even Prescott Valley, our first house we ever owned was off the backside of, off of Pawnee Drive. And it's dirt roads back then. Uh, they had, uh, you had no sewer service. You had septic fields and you had, they, they basically ran a an electrical cord to your house, and that's all you got. That's the only services you had. Uh, so they've really upgraded. It's so nice what you all have done in Prescott Valley. Oh, my gosh. It's so great. Uh, but back then, it seemed flat, but I would still get a pressure change in the backside to the front side. So, so pressure compensated, really, that little button emitter, the water goes in it, swirls and spits out, and then, then, then drips. The orifice is a little bit larger, two gallon instead of one gallon. I find I don't have as much maintenance or as many clogged valves. But if you haven't walked your irrigation line, you probably should. So just turn it on in the middle of the day when you're sipping, you know, I don't know, coffee, tea. Haven't just want to enjoy the hummingbirds. Walk out there and just test it. Make sure that things are are well, especially before you go on a trip. Got that brand new Class A sitting there. You're loaded up, getting it ready for the road trip. Make sure you're taking care of your plants, just the, the irrigation. It's going to get hot here. It's going to get really hot where the plants are really dependent on you for that irrigation. In addition to that, before we go on a, on a major trip, um, we I actually hand water things too. So I've got a, a fan spray that goes on the end of the hose. So I'll just go lay it out in a certain section of the yard. I'll just kind of let it run for an hour. And just kind of hydrate and make sure everything's plump and full before I take off. And I find I have less problems when I come back. Of course, that being said, last year we went off. Where'd we go? We were, the whole family was someplace up on Lake Powell or something. And uh, and the main water, the, the, the water line broke to the house. No one's staying there. Now we don't have irrigation, you don't have water, you don't have anything. They just shut the whole meter off, and our water bill was like $1,000. So the city of Prescott's very gracious. They split it 50-50 if you have a water break. Or, but they caught it. They are watching the, the meter spin, and they came out and turned it off for us. So thank you very much, city of Prescott. You guys are awesome. Um, no wonder we're so efficient with our water use here in Prescott compared to Southern California, Phoenix, Tucson, all these folks are using twice the amount of water that we use 
up here in, in Prescott. Prescott. Prescott, I say, Central Highlands. So we're very efficient uh, if you're using city water. So anyway, that's where, what went off 10 minutes just on irrigation. Sorry about that. We'll get to plant inspiration here in just a moment. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. Waters companion plants in May are Vining Akebia, Indian Hawthorn, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Purple Robe Locusts. Incredible long clusters of purple flowers in May that look just like wisteria flowers hanging from this local bloomer. The 8-inch fragrant flowers cover the tree profusely. Super hardy and drought tolerant with a brisk growth rate of 2 feet in 1 year. It's just the perfect backyard shade tree. You'll find the shadiest trees here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes in the studio each week and just uh, fields your questions. Do you ever think you'd be doing this for a living when you're in high school, college? No, not at all. Really? No, no, no. I figured I'd leave the family business far behind and move on. And think- in high school. Who wants to stay in their little town when they're in high school? I've always wanted to own a small business. Always. That's true. You have. I've always. In fact, we started our first business. We were in college. Mm -hmm. So we recreated your wedding bouquets out of silk. So you'd have them permanently for your, you go press that dress, put it in the closet, let the moths eat it, and then uh, have your silk bouquets and you can have your, I guess, kids play with them later. Yeah, I know. (laughs) All that those was our things first we thought were so important. Yeah. yeah we like, used to hey. put a, a an ad in the uh, ASU. That's we dated mm-hmm. through college at ASU. Go Sun Devils. And uh, we put an ad in the local mm-hmm. college newspaper and people would come. That's it's true. kind of fun. So anyway, I've always known. Well, yeah, small business, but I didn't know. I mean, my degree's in education. I figured I'd be off doing that. And well, now you're educating people about gardening here on the airwaves across northern Arizona. Oh, well, that is true. That is true. <laughs> so what kind of questions we got this week? Well, first we have a question from Dan, who's out in Chino. He's starting to see small grasshoppers yeah. in his garden area. And he wants to know the best way to take care of those, deal with them before they eat everything. Yeah, grasshoppers in, in Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, Paul, and that whole valley section going up through there. Uh, they don't just grow grasshoppers. They grow grasshoppers on steroids. It's a yeah. new kind of, not new, it's an old kind of plague. <laughs> they, they described the first few books of the Bible, plagues, uh, the last book, Revelations, of plagues of grasshoppers and bugs. That's They got that envisioned from uh, Prescott Valley grasshoppers. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't, if you're not careful, they'll take over and they'll eat everything in their path. Literally, the ground can be moving uh, it's, it can literally be that bad if you're new to that area. Okay, now everybody's afraid. Now, now, what do we do with it? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> oh, so here's what to do. So, grasshoppers have an exoskeleton. So they start out in the fry stage. They start to hatch. You walk across the field, you'll see the weeds kind of jumping around. Things are jumping around. You go, what is that? And if you look real close, it's a tiny, tiny baby grasshopper. Mm-hmm. Then they shed that exoskeleton and become larger. They do this several times through the growing season. By the time they get done, you know, by August, they're they're the size of like, I don't know, golf balls. They're huge. And so if you can put down a bait right now, mm-hmm. even on the biggest of properties, um, if you put down a bait called no low bait, N-O-L-O, uh, that bait actually um, will- you they'll, something on your tongue. I, something. I don't know what it is. But only the people on the, uh, on the, on the video piece can, can see that. Well, it's bothering so, me too. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. How do I get into this? <laughs> anyway, uh, 
we digress. Yeah. yeah. People just change the channel while they're driving right across to going up. To... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I even at? No, no, hoppers, no, 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 hoppers, no, no, bait. So you sprinkle this, it's wheat that we've laced with a virus uh, that, that is very specific targeted towards grasshoppers and crickets, mainly grasshoppers. But if you've got crickets, it, it'd take them out too. But they come out at night and they'll, they'll eat some of this no low bait and they get sick. Takes them a while to die, but they'll stop eating right away. Mm -hmm. And so it takes them about, I don't know, three, four, five days before they kind of starve to death is how they die. And then um, any eggs that they happen to lay uh, while they're infected are also infected with that virus. So it kind of spreads through the generations. Uh, and then uh, grasshoppers are cannibals. And so if they got a buddy that dropped, other grasshoppers are coming and eat that body, and then it spreads that way. So the virus goes through the entire population. It seems to last, they say for a year, a season. I find it gets just over a year. Maybe it'll almost affect the next season somewhat. Mm -hmm. So it builds, it helps. Uh, when we lived in Skull Valley, I used to put it down the fence line around the greenhouses. So we had 10 acres. That's a big property. And around us were nothing but cattle ranches. There were no houses, just more ranch land. And so it's like a free for all with your grasshoppers. Right. And so I'd, I'd sprinkle just little tiny piles. I don't spread it. Don't spread the flakes, put little piles around and don't put it inside your garden because they're drawn to it. They right. want those oh, tasty. Oh, look, they're putting a meal out for us. Yeah, we are. Have at it, boys. Eat up. Uh, you want to draw them out of the garden. So you put it around the outer edges of the garden. They're drawn to that. And then you'll start to see the, the population cleaned up. You might see a few grasshoppers, but it won't be this the ground is moving kind of stuff. So a couple of important things. We say yeah. it's a virus. So yeah. Oh, that's right. Tends to freak Can't say that anymore. Yeah. So it's very specific to grasshoppers. Right. It does not affect any bird or right. cat or dog. That Your husband. Eat the grasshopper. Yep, it's nothing. very specific to them. Yeah. And it's not like it's going to mutate. <laughs> yeah. It's not COVID. Throughout. It's not COVID. It's just yeah. going after grasshoppers. Yeah. So, so grasshoppers, you'll never get rid of all of them. Right. A nuclear Holocaust. There's only two, two things that will survive at the very end. Grasshoppers and ants. Those two things. There, there's no way to get rid of all of them. Yeah. You're just trying to thin them and keep them under control. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, uh, they, they will, will eat your plenty. entire gardens. Yeah. yeah. A pound of, of no low bait will cover an acre. So if right. you think in those terms, it kind of helps you. So if you've got a smaller property than that, mm -hmm. keep some in reserve because grasshoppers, they, they have several hatchings a year. So you, you leave some in reserve so you can, you can reapply right. when the next fry stage, that next baby mm -hmm. stage of grasshoppers comes out right. and keep ahead of it. It is a living product. Mm -hmm. You do want to check the date. So we, we just got our shipment in. We've been waiting. So we have the freshest possible virus, I guess, uh, inf flakes. It looks like Wheaties, basically. Right. It's infected with, with a virus. Mm -hmm. Went fresh, and it doesn't carry over to the next year. you got to use it all up right now, this year. Right. right. Okay. Within three months. I think we've explained we've, all that. Eat no load to death. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No load. So Marie has a question. She's in Prescott. She had to remove three Leland Cypress. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. Um, due to the ceridium canker. Yeah. So she's asking, what can she put in that spot? It was kind of a block between her and her neighbor, yeah. something fast growing, disease resistant. What would you recommend? So there's a lot to choose from. Now, Now, first of all, if you have Leland Cypress, we haven't sold those for over five years or more. Sure. Uh, we, this, there's, a, there's a canker that's obliterating all the Leland Cypress. It's beautiful green, some of them very mature. We're talking 20 feet tall and 12 feet wide. Been in for 10, 20 years. They're all failing. All of them. There's no cure. And so now what do you do? Well, you buy a new chainsaw, you take them down, and then don't put Leland Cypress back in. That's just, if you still see these sold at the box stores and stuff. It's just, it just hurts me. It's just wrong. But anyway, uh, don't put more Cypress in. Put a put a spruce or pine or junipers or what we, we put in, some big blocking thing. All your leafy types of, or deciduous types of plants, uh, aspens, a uh, birch, great choice, very tough, takes the wind and the sun, it takes our soil. There's lots of good choices. I would say take a quick measurement, take a quick picture, mm -hmm. come in and we could really help you to redesign that part of the yard because we use those as windbreaks, uh, privacy screens. We realize your, your yard feels naked 
we'll help you. We're naked. <laughs> so, anyway, That's anyway, a we'll help you. Yeah. yeah. All right. We have time for one more. Yeah, I think so. All right. So Mark moved in, finally moved into their new home. Yay, in Valley. welcome. He wants to know, is it too late to be putting in some vegetables? Oh, no, not at all. No, we're, what was it, 86 today? I mean, it's just like, it's not that hot. No, watch your watering. But yeah, you could plant right, right now and you'll get great harvest. What you'll find is, okay, you're a month later than everyone else, but everyone else planted first part of May. You're here in June. The soil is warm now, mm -hmm. so things root out really fast. They 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 grow really fast. Whereas back in May, yeah, they grew, but they were kind of in slow motion because right. they were cold at night. The soil was was cool, and so you, you're perfectly fine. Same with I know that's vegetables, but trees and shrubs they sure. do the exact same thing. New butterfly bush, crepe myrtle, they love new grapes, pomegranates, figs. They love being planted while it's warm, while the soil is warm. Yeah. Just be careful to watch your watering. Don't let them dry out. Uh, so, so you've got to be more accurate, more spot on mm -hmm. with your watering. You should be fine. Go for it. Welcome to the neighborhood, Mark. All right, Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden companion plants in May are Vining Akebia, Purple Robe Locust, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Indian Hawthorn. Wind is no problem for this Indian Hawthorn. Rose-colored flowers cover this spring bloomer that often repeat blooms in fall. Dark blue berries adorn this compact bush that takes the wind and soaks up the sun like a native. Perfect for low-maintenance gardens with virtually no pruning, ever. Every backyard should have at least one and only found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Oh no! My pine trees look terrible! Never fear! Plant Protector is here! Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to the Mountain Gardener's local expert, Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So it's out on the back patio, sipping a glass of wine, watching a sunset. It's just beautiful out there. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. And uh, the cutter bees were active. So cutter bees, if you ever see a leaf on a rose, actually they can cut out just about anything, but this perfect circle coming exactly out of a leaf. Just like, where'd that, what happened? To the, where's that circle come from? What, where'd the, what is that? That's a cutter bee. It looks like a bumblebee. It floats around like a bumblebee. It's got the same body like a bumblebee, only it's not black and yellow. It's all black. That is a cutter bee or cutter bumblebee, whatever you want to call it. And um, they take out perfect circles and they take them back to the nest and they actually build nests and they do things with it. They're not necessarily eating your tree and they're not worthy of spraying. Your tree cutter bees are great pollinators out in the yard. They're some of the best pollinators. The problem is the nest of a, of a bumblebee or cutter bee, any of these larger, larger type of bees, there's very few of them in a nest. And so you really want to be, you really want to treat them with respect and care for them because they're such good pollinators and it's so easy to obliterate that nest. So usually they're up on a branch. I've got a nest up underneath my deck, up underneath here. They don't sting you. They can't even see you. In fact, they're bumbling boobs. They sit there and kind of bounce around. They kind of bump into stuff. They're kind of like goofballs uh, as far as the bee world goes. They're kind of fun. They're entertaining to watch. But if you find one, a black bumblebee, and you see any kind of perfect circles out of any of the foliage of your yard, that is a cutter bee. Now you're an expert on all things bees. Not all things bees, all things cutter bees. I look at them as real beneficial, but they're kind of entertaining to watch. Another one that's, that's out right now 
is budworms. Oh my gosh. The problems we're having here, here's what happens when plants get stressed, uh, when the, when during drought, I guess, when, when, when the landscapes are stressed, um, they're the problems that can attack them. Let's say insects or fungus or disease, they become very bad very quickly. And so budworms are taking advantage of some of your flowers. So budworms are a little tiny green caterpillar. It likes to eat only the flower of geraniums, petunias, calabrocoas. If you've got this beautiful green, this beautiful flower, and hardly any color on it, you're going, what? They were so nice last year. What's going on this year? Almost guaranteed, it's budworm. Budworms come out, this caterpillar eats the flower and doesn't eat the foliage. And so you hardly see them. And as they eat the flower, they start to take on the same color as that flower. It's, it's camouflage. They're brilliant. Uh, they're easy bird bait, but the birds can't find them because they look just like the flower. And so if you see that, it's super, super easy to control them. And it's an all organic spray. You spritz the plot flower and and they just, they come out and eat that, that next morning. They get sick to their stomach. They stop eating and they die in about two, three days. So the product is BT, B as in boy, T as in Tom, BT. Uh, you spritz it onto that, that flower, let's say a petunia. And within seven, 10 days, it will be back into bloom just like that. Just right. You take that pressure off from those caterpillars almost immediately. They set buds and just go after it. And so I would say watch for that. Uh, be, be careful of those. We're starting to see spider mites out at the garden center. So you're seeing samples where, where uh, a juniper or a, uh, a Alberta spruce, gosh, you're on a lot of different things, this webbing material showing up on things. So we're seeing it on oaks. So this webbing material. And you're going, where'd that webbing? I don't see a spider. Where'd this come from? What's going on? And then the flower or the, not so much flowers, the shrubs, mainly it's shrubs. Their favorite are, are junipers. They naturally eat alligator and, and shaggy bark junipers. But then all of a sudden it gets bad enough. Those trees or shrubs will start to look kind of dusty, then dry, then die. You don't want to let spider mites get away from you. They can obliterate a tree. It, you can hardly see them. The only way I can see them is if, if I take a white sheet of paper and I just tap on that and, and I'll, uh, on, over to that paper. And then you'll see dust kind of crawling around on the paper. You can hardly see them with the naked eye. You need a microscope. Uh, but one tall tale sign is you'll see that webbing. It'll look dusty. And then, then, it, then it will actually look dry, and then it will die just in that sequence. And it does it pretty quick. That, that particular insect loves summer. As soon as we get up in the 80s, high 80s, 90s, you'll see spider mites show up. Every year it shows up. And I don't know how bad it will be this year, but you don't want to mess around with it. So with my plants, I just take my, my organic spray, triple action, and I just spray the, I just know what they're going to go after. So I just kind of maintain it. I get ahead of it. I don't let them get a, get a foothold. And so I just spray my, my junipers with triple action, all safe neem oil. doesn't hurt my birds. I don't have to worry about my, you know, the dogs and that kind of stuff. It's just a great way to go about taking them out, but keep an eye on that. And if you see any webbing, you should be concerned. Come talk to us right away. We'll show you how to get rid of spider mites in your backyard. Okay, we got more. Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your with her garden segment right after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. Waters Garden companion plants in May are Indian Hawthorn, Purple Robe Locust, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Vining Akebia. 
Akebia is a super vigorous vine with dangling fragrant flowers. She proliferates up arbors, pergolas, fences, and stunning as a ground cover to retain hills. One of the fastest growing evergreen vines you can plant in the gardens. You only find the hardiest vines at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And Ken and Lisa Lane, The Mountain Gardeners, we're here each week talking about your landscapes. What do you find out in the gardens? And I think there's some value into a weakness that that, that most garden shows have. They have one host, usually it's a guy, in bib overalls, talking about landscapes. And uh, you just get one opinion, one voice, like a monotone thing. Well, I wanted to make it more interesting. And the most interesting person I know in my life is Lisa Water. She grew up in the family garden center Mm -hmm. and she's been gardening. Well, don't say it (laughs) for at least, uh, for, for a few seasons. There we go. About that. I'm seasoned. (laughs) Seasoned. Well seasoned. seasoned. Great flavor. Mm -hmm. There we go. go. And so Lisa comes and just shares her garden kind of insight. What's going on? So what do you see? What do you get kind of a different perspective? Mm -hmm. Same garden, but from a different angle. Right. Right. Well, now is a really good time to kind of walk through your yard and go, man, I need I need something different there. Or, that just didn't work the way I thought it was going to work. And so you move it to another part of your yard, but yeah. then you put something else in. So I think some people get too caught up in the, I've planted it, I'm done, I'm walking away. <laughs> it either lives and, or dies now. Right. <laughs> you know, and there's, there's a big advantage to walking through and just going, well, you know, that plant wasn't as tall as I had hoped it was going to be or wasn't the color I wanted or so many things you can change out, whether pots or perennial beds or just your landscape. Um, and don't be afraid to move things within the yard. Don't be afraid to go shopping at great garden centers and find new stuff to bring home. So we have a saying. Uh-oh. Which at one? The Lane family <laughs> saying. This is saying number like 77. We have, oh, we have quite a so few. Uh, you can't go through life afraid. Oh, so that's yes. like we've been preaching at that our, our kids for forever. Mm-hmm. And so um and then our our that goes for out inside as well as mm-hmm. outside. So our daughter Megan, <laughs> she grew up in the in the nursery. So uh-huh. now she's working. We've got uh, four kids that work in the garden center. Mm-hmm. They've all grown up and just they just are surrounded by plants. We talk plants and we mm-hmm. share plants. We go visit botanical gardens and see plants and we go to hang out where garden centers hang out because mm-hmm. they like plants too and we just do plants right. and her big thing is houseplants yes. she will putz around for hours With her taking plants. care of her houseplants every evening Oh, yeah. So it's kind of fun to watch she, her nest. She moves them around. Yep. I never know where they're going to be the next time <laughs> I see them. And yep. Yeah, so. she's not afraid to do that. And you got to do that inside and outside. I agree. Yep. It makes it more fun. But on that line, I found some really cool plants, uh, new additions to the families of plants that okay. I think people ought to take a look at. I would agree with that. And I gather they're coming in stock there. You can find them at the garden center now. Yes. These are, must be the summer, better hurry though. the summer mix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't wait on these people. You got to yeah. don't go. Oh the yeah. I heard about just... that plant and then come in three weeks later. Cause it isn't going to be, yeah, be here. Yeah. Right. So um, there's a new delphinium out. It's called Del genus Breezen. Del genus Breezen. Yeah. I said it, say that 10 times fast. Oh my gosh. Really pretty though. And it blooms from spring until fall. Nice. Uh, it has a really pretty lavender flower That's to it. And it's almost a double lavender. Oh. Just really, really caught my eye as I was walking through. I was like, ooh, ooh, what's that? What's now, is that, that a shade lover? What? Are, yes. Shade loving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could take filtered light, yeah. morning sun, afternoon. Uh, Patios in a, in a, yeah, in a perfect. container, perfect spring mm-hmm. through fall. That's like magic. Yeah. Perennial but comes back. Absolutely nice, big. I should have brought one over. Yeah. Nice big flower, very very pretty. Um, there's a Max Free <laughs> Bloody Cranes Bill. Bloody Cranes Bill. That sounds <laughs> gruesome. I'm like, but for th- who comes up with these names? <laughs> but it's a really pretty magenta pink color. So Cranes Bill is a perennial geranium. 
Mm -hmm. uh, usually stays Very a little tough. lower, spreads out, but just a bright, bright little blossom on there. You know, and a lot of people are used to the crane's bill in the lighter pinks and the blues, but this was just very striking in its bright color. I'll feature that when I'm putting together an article right now, um, perennials that make great ground covers in the shade. Ooh. So that would make a, that's oh, yeah. a perfect one for that. Yeah. Excellent. Crane's bill. I did feature, but I'll feature that specific mm -hmm. name, that new, new color. Cause right. you just aren't going to see that anywhere else. That is true. And we are starting to get some of our hydrangeas in. Uh, we got the strawberry shake hydrangea oh, in, nice. which uh, the blooms start out white. And as they mature, they turn pink. Like a strawberry. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool, shake. actually. So real pretty, nice shaped little hydrangea. We also got our Seaside Serenade Hamptons series in, which is another pink one but which seemed to do really well in this area Things but do great. really nice for those shady areas to put in just a fun little plant for that oh and just a note we did get some more star jasmine in oh, we had a cool. lot of people looking yeah. for that so i just wanted to mention that um i love the smell and we have some in some pots out front and i just love to go sit by them and just have that smell in the evening if you're morning. driving right now and you're in your car you're just tuned in you should turn the car and point it towards Waters Garden Center because <laughs> Star Jasmine's hard to find it and it'll be gone by the weekend. It it'll is. just be, it'll fly out yeah. of here. We felt really lucky to find some yeah. more. So definitely check that out. And then we got a really cool echinacea coneflower in. Um, this one's called Delicious Candy. Yeah, that sounds good. And I, my daughter was standing there. I said, what color would you say that? And she goes, oh, that's fuchsia. And I'm like, okay, it's good. That's fuchsia. Oh. <laughs> but just a really, really pretty, full, dark, pink fuchsia colored echinacea uh, another new one that's out and that's a sun lover oh yeah um, butterfly hummingbirds mm -hmm. love echinacea oh, yeah. mm -hmm. just a real real pretty color we got a pinstamen and we actually got quite a few pinstamen in so if you've been looking for pinstamens um they just now have started showing up the one we got is dark towers which i really love dark towers because it has a a um, dark leaf to it so the leaf is not brown like you think brown what would i call it Burgundy chocolate chocolate there you go uh and the flower that comes off of it is a is a light white to pink so just really that dichotomy Contrast. between the two colors very very pretty pinstamens there. they are a native they grow wild out mm -hmm. they're a wildflower they're going to reseed and come up other places and hummingbirds are definitely mm -hmm. attracted to pinstamen right is there another name is there a common name for pinstamen well you know, know the other name i see it go by is beard beard's tongue beard oh, tongue. it's better never mind beard's tongue and <laughs> bloody cranes bill there we go those are great names beard's tongue in the yard <laughs> it, it is a pinstamen and we actually got some really pretty ones in pinks and purples and this dark towers is gorgeous we got a, a, a verbena in a new verbena called meteor shower oh neat oh. so this one was really cool it it definitely it's a zone 7 to 11 so it meets our requirements. It's heat and drought hardy, and it self deadheads. Oh, cool! That's unusual. So really unusual. Perfect for those hot spots. And most of your verbenas tend to be very animal resistant. Oh, very much, yeah. Uh, so this would be really cool. And the flower is kind of a dark purple lavender color to it. Yeah, so really Verbena, a nice one. Great for there. rock gardens, boulders. Mm -hmm rock lawns where it's just boring you need some pretty stuff around it. in a container you can mm -hmm. abuse it you know just run it over with a truck it keeps yeah. keeps blooming that's verbena yeah, right, right and animals don't eat it yeah typically Tip well yeah, yeah. Right. but anyway i was glad to see that the new verbena out there and then um just another note that we did get some santalina in oh finally uh, we've had people begging for santalina and i couldn't find it couldn't find it we finally got some nice one gallon ones in and the santalina there again if you've got a hot dry spot that's got critters coming by they leave that santalina alone so we use santalina in our backyard mm -hmm. to highlight the paths going up and yeah. down the back stairs so when we have guests over at night we've got some lighting so mm -hmm. there's some there's landscape lighting it's a night it's a resort feel but the santalina is evergreen tough as nails animals don't eat it and it glows in the dark yeah kind of has a light so it kind of helps you see where you're going mm -hmm. so it's just a, it has everything you want every yard it has a, it's a really cute little yellow 
almost daisy like yeah. blossom that comes on yeah. it. So just a terrific little plant out there in the landscape. Right out there where the javelina, the deer, the antelopes are munching through stuff. Mm -hmm. They're not going to eat santolina. It's got right. a it's got a felty kind of smelty. Smells like herbally. Yeah. 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 And then also just to mention, we got some really pretty agastache in oh, nice. our hyssop. Um, one called Sunrise 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 Violet, and the other one was Ambrosia. Oh, I like that name. I want some more uh, Ambrosia. Yeah, <laughs> really pretty colors. The Ambrosia is kind of a little more of an orangey color, and the other one's kind of a pinky violet. All right, great choices that you can plant right now in the heat of summer. Perennials. June is perennial month. Those are all perennials. Mm -hmm. Come back every year. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants in May are Purple Robe Locust, Vine and Achevia, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Easy Elegant Roses. Just plant these roses in a sunny spot and enjoy. We've married the beauty of long stem roses with the easy care of shrub roses for landscape color like no other plant in the backyard. Choose fragrant reds, radiant pinks, corals, vivacious yellows, and stately whites. Extremely fragrant and only found locally at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. Now, Lisa was talking the perennials. So we, uh, let's expand upon that because there's so many. June, there's actually... Really, there's there's six garden seasons in the mountain of, mountains of Arizona. We've just come off of spring, but before that is early spring. So from March through April, it's still frosty. It's spring. Things are blooming. Things are going. But the things you put in the ground need to be able to take that frost at night. They need to be able to take the warm days and huge temperature swings, exposed to to wind and dryness. Uh, they need to, they you need plants that can do that. Lilacs love that. Flowering quince, forsythia, your crab apples. There's all kinds of plants that love early spring. We've just come back from the spring season, so now we're shifting over to the summer season. So as soon as it hits 90s, you're pretty much going in from spring to summer. So spring is going to be when you plant your tomatoes. It's when you put your flower gardens in. It's when you're planting new fruit trees, grapes, pomegranates. Just, you're planting some stuff in spring and having them encourage them to grow for the season. Right now, I defined this as June is the perennial month. Plants that come back year after year, you'll find the best selection, the broadest selection of perennials in the month of June. The reason that is, Perennials have to be typically two years old. So we'll plant perennials last year before they even, before last spring. That was 2019-20, we planted perennials. And finally, with the second season, the second growing season, they start to bloom. So perennials need to be at least two years old, at least before they're old enough to bloom, to actually push to be showy. And so we're, we're, they, they're usually got to get through this first season, and then you start to see them show up. It's also why perennials are a little more expensive than annuals. Annuals, I mean, six weeks, you plug them by seed or cuttings, and uh, within six, eight weeks, you're selling them just like that. I mean, two months later, you're starting to sell that crop. So they're, they're far less expensive. A perennial, some of the peonies... They're 10 years old before we can sell them. Some of the some of the shrubs, the ground covery kind of stuff, they're seven, eight years old before we can sell them. And so, but minimum two years for most perennials before they're starting to bloom and show off. Well, June is when it seems like everything is available all at once. You can see them all. You don't have to shop them by little tiny tags. You're, you're going in and looking at the entire mature plant and many of them are fully mature. They're at their mature height and they'll just get whiter, more beautiful. That's June. July, August, 
is really summer, the summer planting season. This is when your best crepe myrtles, the best rows of Sharon's, chaste tree, there's all this, uh, lots of the native -y kind of stuff, the cacti and yuccas, they start to bloom in the summer and they like being planted in the summer when the ground is warm. Then you go to fall, September, October. That's going to be the fall, into November, really. It can really go till Thanksgiving, but that's when your the, the fall color maples go into color, aspens. It's the best time to be planting fruit trees and uh, big sycamores and evergreens start to show up then. That's your fall planting season, lots of fall color. And we, we're growing trees that will be harvested just for that season. So folks, that's a whole nother planting season, the fall season. Then the last season is the evergreens, holidays, the holiday season. This is when the spruce and the pine, the firs, all those holiday decor, you know, poinsettias start to show up, amaryllis. Here's this houseplants go big, I mean really big, because we don't have vegetables at that point. And we'll have maybe a few kales and spinach, cool season things, but really it's houseplants take center stage. The holiday plants take center stage, they're featured. And so we'll harvest the largest, uh, the best selection of evergreen types of trees for the landscape are typically in October, November. And so if you can buy those and put them in the ground before November, before Thanksgiving, let's say, you'll have a better take next spring and you'll have primo uh, selection. We sell more living trees for, for the holidays. They're, people are buying a living tree, put it in the ground, or not even in the ground, they'll bring it in the house, decorate it, use it, plant it after the holidays are over uh, when, when the, the celebrations are done. So we see this theme over and over and it's, it's, it's growing, that trend is growing. And so that's your early spring. Spring, June is perennial month, summer planting season, July and August. Fall, September, October, and the holiday season. Really it's Thanksgiving through Kind of Valentine's is that winter holiday. You can still plant in Prescott, the Central Highlands area. I would say if you're under, let's say, 6,000 feet elevation, you can plant year round. There's not a season. Uh, Phoenix, they can't plant right now. It's too hot, but we're not that hot. Flagstaff, they really have a hard time planting when the ground is frozen solid for 18 inches. It's hard to plant. But here, the ground doesn't freeze. We're in this perfect sweet spot, which is why we live up here in the mountains of Arizona. It's just so nice up here. And so you're seeing some of the best selection of hydrangeas. We've been wanting hydrangeas for, for forever. Uh, usually about Mother's Day, we have a, a boatload of them. They're holiday plants. They were Plants are in short supply this year. There's demand for them. So finally... We started to get, and it's been a month late, but we finally started getting in hydrangeas. These beautiful, pom-pommed, glorious. The, the secret with hydrangeas, that you need a repeat blooming hydrangea. You don't want a, like an East Coast variety. You want, a, you want one that's, that blooms on new wood. That's the secret. Because our winters are so cool, they'll get reset underground. So that brand new growth needs to come out and set a flower. Most of your old school the ones your grandparents grew up with, they bloomed on second year wood. Well, if the mountains of Arizona are going to burn it back to the ground uh, and it's got to grow fresh from the ground like a perennial all over again, you'll want to repeat blooming. So that's the secret to some of these plants. You need the right variety. Fruit trees. It's a great time to plant a new plum, new peach, cherries, apples, pears. It's a great time. But you want to plant varieties that bloom later in spring. So you, it's all about chilling hours. And so we're trying to curate plants that you can plant right now. It'll actually, if you planted a fruit tree right now, you would have fruit this time next year. It just, it would just load up. It's, you get it fully rooted, but you want plants that bloom later in spring. Well, we, that's what we specialize in. We don't have any desert varieties up here. We only have mountain varieties. And so that's, that's a difference. That's why your local, your neighborhood garden center is trying to help you be more successful. Whereas a box store, they've got one buyer, probably in Arkansas, who's buying for all, you know, 
500 stores, ship, ship 10 of those to every one of my stores. They don't care if it's Flagstaff or White Mountains or Phoenix or Tucson. They just go and give them all. I know I'll sell them. We'll make a buck off these. Sometimes it's not right to be selling Leland Cypress in the central highlands of Arizona because I know they'll grow in Phoenix. There's no, there's no canker taking out all the cypress down there, but there is up here. You can't just order 20 of them for all of my stores. That's wrong. That's where you, these little pop-up stands that show up. So we had a this pop-up nursery that showed up you know, down the street a ways. Be careful. What happens is the Phoenix markets, the Phoenix growers, they're growing for Phoenix. And then they got some leftover stuff. Going, how are we going to get rid of this stuff? Let's go pop up a nursery up in Prescott or Flagstaff or Payson. Let's go to let's go to Kingman real quick. We'll just dump all of our junk up there, and then we'll be out. We'll clean up. The, we'll sweep up the nursery. We'll start next next spring's crop. Sometimes they're not selling the right stuff, and so if you, I know it's cheap because they're just trying to dump it and liquidate, get their cost out of it. But it doesn't mean you you want to garden with that stuff. Sometimes you're struggling. Not because you're not a gardener or, or a bad gardener or brown thumbs. It's because you were sold the wrong thing for your for your gardens. Anyway, I'm getting all, I can feel the blood pressure going up right now. So ah, take a deep breath. Recenter. Coming back, I need some hot yoga right now. That's what I need to kind of get worked up. <laughs> anyway, we got more for you. Got uh, new garden classes, the best Facebook posts and why small business should really exist. Why do they go to work every day? Right after this. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. We just started our 2021 summer garden classes this week. It's kind of exciting. We took a break or a little hiatus because uh, May, uh, there's not enough parking spaces. We just don't have enough capacity. But now we're off the backside of the, the garden season. And so we've got more, it's still busy, but we've got so we can breathe. So the staff, there's enough staff now, there's enough parking spaces. It just all works out. So starting this weekend, it's the doctors in the house. I'll be teaching this class personally. Uh, it's just how do you deal with grasshoppers and what to look for and how do you how do you help plants, how, stressed plants, how do you bring them back to health? So it's all the real intricacies of gardening. This is kind of gardening 301. Uh, it's free class. Starts at 9.30 on Saturday. We will actually live stream that. It goes out to our Facebook and YouTube channels as well. So you can go back if you missed it. You can go look at it at your leisure. Next week is perennial plants that thrive in summer heat. I think uh, uh, Michelle Hyatt is going to teach that one. She's my all things color manager. So she controls half the garden center. Uh, talks to all the growers. She's going to share which plants love the heat. How do you plant them? How do you get the most out of them? Then it's the best fruit trees. That's June 26th. And then July 3rd, we will be opening. So the 4th we're closed, but the 3rd, that's a Saturday. We are open. So it's gardening for newcomers. That's a popular, popular class. What are our zones? How do you deal? What? When do you grow certain things? So we'll go deep into that. And then it's 
better grapes and berries, uh, avoiding pests, privacy screens, edible landscapes. It just goes on and on. Take a look at watersgardencenter.com. You can see the entire class schedule or Facebook. You look at Facebook Waters Garden Center. You folks that do Facebook, you know what to do. Under the events tab, all the classes are listed right there. Facebook, you know, the uh, uh, it seems like every time we post a picture of of our kids or the dogs or a close up of, of flowers, it just goes, it almost goes viral. That's what social media is. And so this week, the number one post of all things, I can't get this, but Lisa's watering the landscape and I'm pruning some trees. They just got a picture of both of us going, hey, the owners are out here active and they just got more comments and you know, it's a great place. Yay, heart, 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 happy uh, for uh, um, Instagram. The number one post we just got in our new, um, the summer series of pottery. So houseplants. There's no great styles, pretty containers you would want to put a house plant in in town. It's just we just want we got to do something about this. So we brought in basically a truckload of house plant type of of of, of containers, and there's they're pretty. And so we we shot uh, each staff member got to pick their favorite pot, and so Tippy, our little schnauzer. Uh, has their favorite pot and it just went crazy. So little tiny Mexican or, or, or Spanish style terracotta, you know, Talavera type of pot with Tippy the, the schnauzer in the backdrop. It just got so many, it's almost cheating on social media. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. And then I mentioned why should companies go to work every day? So I just, we had our staff meeting every two weeks. We train the entire staff. We stay late or come in early. And here's what you're seeing. Here's what's going on. So we're all on the same wavelength, all the same page. And I shared with the staff, I said, why? What is our vision statement? Why do we go to work every day? Why does the family for 59 years, what do we stand for? And they all kind of looked at me and went, uh, what are you talking about, vision statement? So Waters Garden Center, the reason we exist is to share God's beauty and love to our community. That's it. That's our vision statement, to share God's beauty, landscaping, flowers, and love. Our, our, just That's to our vendors, to our staff, to our customers, to our plants. We pray over our plants, of all things. They're kosher plants. Uh, so we were trying to make things better, making our community better. And that's why we go to work every day. Yeah, a business has to make profit or they don't deserve to be in, a, in business. But it's way, way deeper than that. So to share God's love and beauty to our community. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, are here each week throughout the week, uh, each day. And we love talking to fans of the show. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in. I was raised in a nice house with my family. Now I'm out on my own and have my own apartment. I love my cute little place, but there's something I do miss. I miss my mom's garden in the backyard. It was so special because over the years I was growing up, I watched her give those flowers and plants such a personal, loving touch and so much color. I miss it so. Well, guess what? I just visited my local garden center and they gave me some great ideas. And now, because of them, when I look out my patio window, I see the beautiful planter they suggested, teeming with flowers, bright Arizona flowers. Looking at those flowers gives me such a nice feeling, and it's almost like being with mom in the backyard all over again. Want help with planting? It's all online at plant-something.org. Brought to you by the Arizona Nursery Association at plant-something.org. You'll love it, too. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.